Hi, this is a training video for the OWASP Z Attack Proxy, otherwise known as ZAP. In this video, I'm going to give you a very high level overview of ZAP, the features it provides, and what it can do for you. Future tutorials will go into these features in more depth. My name is Simon Bennett, and I'm the ZAP project leader. I'll start with an obvious question What is ZAP? SAP is an easy to use tool for finding vulnerabilities in web applications. It's important to note you should only use SAP on your own applications or ones that you have permission to test. It is completely free and open source. It's also one of the select group of OWASP flagship projects and is the tool OWASP recommend for testing web applications. Unlike many security tools, it is ideal for people new to application security but it's also used by security professionals, so it's a tool that can be used by a wide variety of people. It's also ideal for developers and functional testers, and can be used to create automated security tests that can be incorporated into a continuous development environment. There's already another training video which goes into this in more detail. And it's becoming a framework for advanced security testing. I'll now mention some of the principles behind ZAP which may help you decide if ZAP is right for you. As mentioned before, it is free and open source, so there's no pro version and therefore no reason for us to hold back features that other people or companies may decide to charge for. It's also cross-platform, so you can use it on Windows, Linux and Macs. Ease of use is a priority, which I think is important for experts as well as beginners. It's also easy to install. It requires Java to run, but everything else is included in the standard downloads. It is fully internationalised and has been translated into a dozen of other languages. A full set of help files is included and these can also be viewed on the web. It works well with other tools, so you can use more specialised tools in conjunction with ZAP if you need to. Wherever possible, we try to reuse other well-regarded components, only implementing new functionality ourselves if there are no other good alternatives. And involvement is actively encouraged. ZAP is a community project and we try and make it as easy as possible for new people to get involved and contribute. ZAP provides all of the essentials that you'll need for testing web applications. If you're new to security then it'll probably provide all the features you need although professional penetration testers will always want to use a wide variety of tools. Each of these features with the subject of a training video. It is an intercepting proxy, so you typically configure your browser to proxy through ZAP so that ZAP can see all of the requests and responses. You can also intercept and change them. It provides both active and passive scanners. The passive scanner just examines the requests and responses but it can still detect certain types of problems just on that basis. The passive scanner runs all of the time and is completely safe to use on any site as it does not perform any attacks. The active scanner is different. This performs a wide range of attacks and should only be used on applications that you have permission to test. The spider can be used to crawl the application, for example to find pages you've either missed or which have been hidden from you. ZAP can generate reports on the issues that it has found, including advice and links to more information about the problems and how to solve them. It can also find files even if there are no links to them using the brute force component, which is based on the OWASP Durbuster tool. It can also fuzz parameters, includes fuzzing libraries from the JBro fuzz and fuzzdb tools. You can use fuzzing to find more subtle vulnerabilities that the automated scanners cannot find. You can also easily extend ZAP, and there is in fact a separate project dedicated to providing ZAP extensions. These can be added to ZAP by just dropping a file into the relevant directory. So have a look at the ZAP extensions project on, the, on Google Code to see the latest extensions that are available. ZAP also provides a wide range of other features, some of which I'll mention now. The auto-tagging feature tags messages in ZAP so you can easily see, for example, which pages have hidden fields. You can change these tags to flag anything of interest to you. ZAP includes a port scanner so you can see which ports are open on the machine. It analyzes 
all of the requests and shows you a summary of all the parameters that an application uses. It has very good smart card support, which is very useful if the application you are testing uses smart cards or tokens for authentication. SAP can compare two sessions, which is very useful if your application supports multiple roles. You can invoke other applications, passing across context information such as the URL you are interested in, as long as the other application supports that. You can also import results back into SAP. SAP can be run without the UI in headless mode and can be accessed via REST API. This is very useful for automated testing. It supports dynamic SSL certificates, so you can generate a unique root certificate authority that you can tell your browser to trust, allowing ZAP to seamlessly inter intercept HTTPS traffic. And has very good support for anti-cross-site request forgery tokens. If your application uses these, and it probably should, then ZAP can automatically regenerate them when active, active scanning and fuzzing. So, to perform a sim simple penetration test using ZAP, I recommend that you configure your browser to use ZAP as a proxy. Explore the application manually, exploring all of the functionality it provides. Use the spider to find pages that you have missed or were hidden from you. You can just use the spider, but I would recommend exploring manually first, as you are more likely to provide sensible inputs to the forms the application uses. You may well find that by this stage the passive scanner has already found some issues. But it's the active scanner that is likely to find the most serious issues. It's important to note that some types of issues cannot be found using any automated tools, which is why Zap also provides tools that help you perform manual testing, but they will be covered in future videos. So that's it for this tutorial. For more information go to the Zap homepage on the OWASP website, where you can download Zap and access much more information including more tutorial videos.